Today we're being joined by Evie Lee from the Carlton VFLW side. Evie, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, is any time. Tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into footy and what type of player you are? Um, so I've been playing footy since I was about 13. Um, developed through Northern Knights, uh, come through out of that pathway, out of Coates yep. League. Um, was captain there last year and now I find myself at Carlton. Um, Playing a bit all over the place this season, a uh, bit yep. of wing, bit of forward, um, uh, go in hard at the ball, um, kind of one of those hard get balls players, and yep. yeah, like a, like a good goal now and then. Absolutely, everyone loves a goal, Evie. I mean, I love goals. I do goal king challenges for fun. I know. goals are just something, Evie. That no matter what position you play, I feel like anyone would enjoy that. You can't not like it. Oh no, nothing beats it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, since on the topic of goals, I might as well say this now. Um, are you a goal celebrator? If so, Evie, is there any particular go-to goal celebration you pull oh. out? Yeah. Look, I'm not much of one. I don't. I'm not. I don't pull out many things, but um, I like a good fist. You know. Good yeah. Response. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're very good ones for sure. Um, what would you say is the best goal you've ever kicked, Evie, at any level? Is there any particular goal that comes to mind? Oh, I think. I think last year at Knights I kicked um, a good snap right in front of the goals. Um, ball kind of was kicked in from about 50 um, and, yeah, it got spoiled and it fell right in front of me and I had a nice snap right in front of goals. So I'd say that would be my favourite one. Yeah, definitely a good one. Um, now, Mark or goalie, Evie, which one would you rather do and why? I think I know the answer. Oh, Probably probably a goal because I'm not that great at marking. But okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, but like nothing beats a goal. Like you can get your whole team around it. Can yeah. can win games. Like a mark is amazing, but mm -hmm. I'd have to go all the way. Absolutely, that's right. Yeah, I mean nothing beats a goal in terms of the celebration. You know, you can carry on for a good minute until the ball's back in the middle. Whereas mark, you know, you take the mark right, and then that's it, really. Mm. Yeah. No. Definitely. That's right. But you you know you can't go wrong either way. And Evie, would you be one to post? that goal of the year content if you were to get one would you be one to post one oh probably probably not fair, fair enough um now you speak about being captain of the denny um denny Nong, um northern knights obviously yeah. previously while you were there um how was that opportunity for you and uh how much of an honor was it to be a captain of the northern knights and was leadership also something even that you're always wanting to get into yeah yeah so um like coming through the nights, I was very, I was a very shy player. I was very overwhelmed with the whole football experience. So no one kind of saw it coming um, down there that I was going to be end up being captain. But yeah, I've always kind of had um, a sense of empathy and kind of connection with my teammates that um, allowed them to back me as their captain. Um, I was co-captain with Lulu Beatty uh, before right. she got drafted. So mm -hmm. we were in it together before one game and then she got picked up, so then it was left to me. But, um, yeah, no, I think um, it taught me a lot last year about, um, you know, working with others, cooperating, um, you know, delegation, all sorts of things that I wouldn't have gotten from any other experience if I wasn't um, in that position last year. So I've learned a lot, um, taken a lot on board with me. And yeah, like I think um, any sort of leadership thing, um, I've learned a lot. And yeah, like um, it's kind of like just ingrained in me. Like I'm, I'm able to just talk off of the top of my tongue, kind of like I can say, I can just motivate people. So I think it kind of came naturally to me. That's good. How did the first opportunity, Evie, to join the Northern Knights and how were you, what was like your initial reaction to being getting told you're in that Northern Knights program? Yeah, so um, I was actually invited before we had futures at Knights um, in, as a 15-year-old just training on. Um, original, I think it was, it was pre-COVID. Pre we had um, like an under-15s type program that um, – they asked the coaches from, um, you know, like, can we have some girls to come train up with us? So I'm just field numbers because obviously post-COVID there wasn't able to be any trial trials or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I got the opportunity to train. I was told, you know, 
um, you're not going to play at all this season. Like, if anything, this is just a training opportunity. And, um, yeah. like, although it was, like, hard to, like, keep showing up every week in training and knowing you're not going to get that opportunity, um, I did really want to, like, progress my footy and stick it out and see how it would take, like, see how far it would take me. And, yeah, ended up going to, like, every single training, every game I could possibly. And towards the end of the season, um, it was the last round and we had a couple of injuries and I got the call up to play, which was pretty surreal. Um, it was big, It was a big deal at the time. Like, I remember I got in the car with my dad on the way home and he was, like, literally just, like, crying because he was, like, your hard work has paid off. Um, and, yeah, and then I managed to somehow get another game and played two for that season. So got two more than I ever thought I would in that first year. So, yeah. That's really good. And anyway, I think that just kind of shows that partly probably why you got a leadership role when you did being the captain at um, Northern Knights because, you know, at that point, you know, you could have people even that, you know, kind of say, you know what, in your position when you were just, you know, training and there was no games planned, it's like some people would be like, ah, screw this, I'm not staying here. Why the hell would I do that, you know, if I'm not mm-hmm. playing? But it just shows your dedication that you had. And like you said, mentioned that your dad said that he's spot on because, you know, you put the hard yards in and stuck it through and you got rewarded in the end. Yeah, no, exactly. And then it got you into the position where you were then eventually captain and then now to where you are right now. Now, speaking of right now, Carlton, obviously yes. you played games last year, I believe, was it for Darabin a couple of games, was it? Yes. So how did that opportunity come out while being involved in the Northern Knights? How did that work? Was it just a random week where Northern were playing? How did that go about? Yeah, so um, I was at Darabin in there. Um, I moved there when I was... 17 for their under 18s team and then like played senior footy there um so in our community breaks last year um I got the opportunity to train with them like during when we had our time off and then that I was fortunate enough to be able to play um and got I think three VFL games in under my belt which is although like Darabin isn't one of those like high performance teams it was still great to um be playing against, like, some of the best of the best in the VFL as a 17-year-old. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, Darabin, obviously, they've struggled for, for multitude of reasons. But like you said, it's it's just that experience and, you know, the communication, the bond and friendships you build with people as well, even in those short times. And then, as you said, playing against those sides. Do you recall some sides you played in those three games, maybe that um, some opponents and some players you got to play against um, that strike out as a, you know, like toughest opponent type situations? Oh, yeah, look, I can't quite remember. Um, I would say playing against um, Bulldogs was a really tough match. Um, yep. I think the margin was quite, like, significant. But, um, no, like, I think overall just, like, the whole level of all of the um, players in those teams were great. And obviously they have their, um, like, Carlton, they have their, AFLW players coming in and training and it really kind of sets a standard and that um, drive up to play better better football. And I think that's what kind of um, like pushed uh, Darabin when we, as we don't have any, they didn't have any um, AFLW players. So, um, but yeah, like no one really stands out. Everyone was good. I just remember being overwhelmed with, oh my God, like I just like, like oh my goodness, like everyone was great. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's right. And you mentioned there about, you know, just having that experience too at that level when you said you were 17 at that point, you know, so it's just great experience for you. Now, making the jump to Carlton, you mentioned there about some AFRWs playing alongside. I know you didn't play on the weekend, but how good is it? You mentioned some would train. So how's it like having Keely Skepper there and a bunch of other the Carlton listed girls there? Yeah, no, it's actually fantastic. Like um, Keely and Maddie Guerin, like, I look up to them so much just from like how they play um, and as people as well and being able to um, train and f- see how they go about their training and um, see how they even perform like on a day-to-day basis is like great, um, a great motivator. Um, and yeah, like I like I couldn't be happier like seeing all the girls. Like I think we've got, we've got quite a few of them training because they're obviously playing at the moment. Um <laughs> And I'll probably go um, do some training with the AFLW as well. Um, oh, no. But, yeah, being able to, like, be a part of that, I'll take anything and learn off of it. Um, I'm just all for any opportunity. 
for sure. And you mentioned, as you said earlier, with the Northern Knights train on thing. I mean, you can't get much better than doing a train on version of that with the A4W girls as well. Yeah, no, exactly. It's the best place to learn. And even seeking, um, you know, feedback from the coaches and stuff has been great. Like um, our head coach, Glenn Strawn, um, he's played VFL games, um, a couple of AFL games at the highest level, like just his experience and even the AFLW coaches coming in um, on our trainings. Um, I've learned so much already in the past like couple months. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually getting out there and playing soon. <laughs> That's right. Obviously, the team obviously had a nice win over Geelong. Um, and obviously, this week, different, obviously playing a different opponent. How do you feel the team started on the weekend against Geelong? Yeah, no, great. I think we've been building um, with momentum. Like, we, we lost both our practice matches. Um, so, I think getting a win under our belt has, like, definitely boosted the confidence of the team and um, backing their ability – abilities within each other as well to know that we can um, perform to our game plan and execute. Um, yeah, I think they did an amazing job. So I think there's more to come as well. That's good. So obviously then joining Carlton VW, VW, how did that opportunity come about, Evie? And uh, is it something that once it happened, it was something you're like, yep, I'm definitely taking this? Yeah. So um, I think it was in December last year. Um We'd finished up with nights and stuff. So uh, actually, no, November, going into preseason, and I got um I got the opportunity through Northern Knights to come down and do a preseason with no guarantees. Um, and then at the same time, I also had um Darabin reaching out wanting me to also join. So it was a bit of a tough decision um at the end of the day because I did really like my experience at Darabin, um, and mm -hmm. they were yeah they were wanting to like sign their list pretty early on, whereas Carlton. Um, left it a bit longer than normal other clubs. So, um, yeah, I think I took that, like, risk and said, no, I want to I want to go to Carlton. I want to see what they have to offer. Um, and, mm -hmm. yeah, I just took – I kept training and then, yeah, luckily managed to stay on and I'm here now. That's good. I mean, I mean, when, I suppose in that thought process, like, you know, as you said, Darabin, they've been so nice to you and it's been great. But from, like, an advanced level in terms of – probably being more, it's not a disrespect to them, but being more noticed, I suppose. And as you mentioned, having A4W girls, I'm sure that was a big pull as well. And then, you know, having those people that are, you know, list managers recruiting in the women's A4W side of things, I've got more eyes is what I'm getting at on, say, a Carlton VFL, for example, than, a, say, a Darabin. Yeah, yeah, potentially. So, yeah, that, um, and even just, like, learning off of the, like I said, the coaches and the other players has been, like, a great experience as well in itself, not for not only for, like, you know, just joining the team, but, like, for my own personal development. That's right. So, obviously, before playing footy at junior level, Eva, your athletics, is that correct? And how did you feel you went to that and then made that jump to footy? Yeah, so um, I was a pretty sporty kid. I pretty much tried um, as many sports as you could as a uh, young person. But, yeah, I think... I did athletics from about um, ages six to about 16. I still still coach in athletics from time to time. Um, but, yeah, I think athletics is a really great sport for any young person. It kind of sets up those fundamental um, skills of, you know, running, jumping, throwing that can be transferred across all sorts of sports. Um, and that's what I found myself in. I found myself in basketball uh volleyball for school I, I could I pretty much did anything I could and I wanted to try um which I think has ultimately like led me down to football because um of all the opportunities opening up as well for it with the AFLW pathways now in place which like 10 years ago wouldn't be able to happen like this wouldn't be happening so um yeah I think I came from soccer as well I had one so year of soccer before football mum said I don't want you getting hurt. Like, you got to play soccer. I'll give it a go. Even though all my friends are playing footy, I was like, Mom, I really want to play footy. So after a year of me complaining about playing soccer, then that's when I transi uh, transitioned over. True. Um, to any mums out there, the kids know best. Isn't that right, Evie? Yes. We don't get hurt too badly. <laughs> no. I mean, with soccer, I mean, you could, you could make people look like you're injured more because they take a lot of diving lessons, I feel they do, as soccer players. Yeah. Not you, anyway. Anyone. Yeah, a lot of my, sister, my sister plays soccer, so we're very aware of the environment <laughs> in soccer. 
That's exactly right. Now, some of your strengths, Evie, as a footballer, what would you say some of them are? And I suppose you mentioned about playing a few positions earlier, playing wing half forward. Versatility is really important these days. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, um, I've played pretty I've played pretty much everywhere um, from back line, forward, midfield, inside, mid, wing, like at Knights to now VFL level. Um, I would say, like, um, I've got a really good work rate um, up and down the field. So I think that's, um, like, I can utilise that on the wing um, from my transition from offence to defence and running back to help um, yeah. is a key skill of mine. Um, as well as uh, at a contest, I think getting those hard hard get balls, like, uh, below below the feet, I think I'm pretty clean at um, my ability to try drive forward from that sprinting background from athletics. Um, I'm pretty pretty quick in that mix between endurance and sprint. I think um, that I've developed from my athletics background um, has really helped me to take on the game a lot more. Um, like being able to run on the wing and doing those um, chase downs and that sort of thing. Um, as well as I think, yeah, I'm a pretty agile um, athletic person as well. So, um, yeah, like I'll contest harder. I'll try and get around people and step people. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and so you got to add a little bit of um, X factor into your game, even if it's from time to time trying to pull out a certain move or, you know, some yeah, some some move is nice to see. Now, obviously at Carlton, who would you say some of your favourite teammates at the club? Oh, favourite teammates. Um. I love um, Octavia. She's our captain this year. She's got a very good character and she's just an amazing um, skilled footy player. Like off of half back, she'll just run forward with the ball every day and get it to our forward line. Oh, that's good. Who who would you say the club loves the limelight, the attention, the camera at the Blues and they can't get enough of it and they know exactly what to do when that camera's around? Oh, oh I'm not oh. – well, I know um, Layla Keck, she, she loves a good camera. Um, she's been training with us quite a bit. So she's got a good uh, couple of good celebrations as well. She loves the celebration. Um, oh, who in the VFL? I would say. Actually, everyone's quite humble, I would say. No no one's quite out there. Um, okay. But there are some characters. There's some very good characters in the team. That's very good. Who are some of those characters? Oh, Izzy Curry, she lo she loves a good um, – loves to rev up the team, um, get in a good fight, defend her teammates. Um, who else? Layla Price, she's come from um, – uh, she played semi-professional basketball, so this is her first year playing VFL, and she's an amazing person to be around, such a mm -hmm. kind and supportive person. So I love her. Some good choices there. What are some goals, Evie, you set for yourself this year? Obviously, um, I suppose for anyone that nominates for a draft last year and misses out, which is obviously unfortunate, but how do you back up from that disappointment to try and, you know, push your way back up? And this step that you've made so far is the first step in the right direction. Yeah, I think um, getting any experience I can and trying to develop my game to become not only a better player but, like, how, a better person and how I go about um, my training and things um, so, yeah, like playing any sort of VFL games um, and just um, seeking feedback from coaches, I think. Um, yeah, like I think like previously I haven't got that much feedback. So, yeah, willing to take on new advice and um, learn a lot more um, to try and put that into, yeah, my footy abilities um, going forward, whether that's training with AFLW or like playing more VFL games and getting more exposure. That's right, because I mean, you know, this all these avenues, even you know, getting picked up these days. You don't. It's not like if you miss out on the national draft, you know, that's it. There's all these injury replacement players, uh, preseason supplementary periods. There's all these avenues now, and train ons is another one. So there's all these other ways you can get it, and you don't have to be 18. It's not like if you're 18 and you miss out, you can't get it ever again. You see, Elise Sheeran from the Tigers is one person I've had on a few times, and it always comes to mind. She's 31 now. She was drafted two years ago, back to back all Australians in there. So you don't have to be 18. To get picked up yeah no exactly and what some of the advice i've um learned from this experience is you know um just work hard put your head down um and just work your butt off and see how far that can take you um so that's what i'm planning on doing i guess 
It's a good way to go about it for sure. Uh, if you were to use an AFL or AFLW player comparison, Evie, to the type of style of play that you play like, who would you say that would be? Um, yeah, I would say, or oh, well, because I go for Geelong, so I would say some of the like men's players, I'd go, uh, like the physicalness as Tom Atkins and kind of like my endurance, like Max Holmes kind of. Okay. Nice. So, some interesting combinations of styles of play, so there's some good ones. Now, I was going to ask you, so Geelong, how do you feel they've gone in their first few games? Obviously, nice win over the Crows and my Saints. I don't like talking about that. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> you've started. Sorry, what was that? How do you feel that Geelong's gone this year? Are you happy with how they've started so far? And how do you feel they can go for the rest of this year? Yeah, no, it's been great to see. Um, better from last year at the start of the season. That worried me a bit. But, um, yeah, I think now that the, um, they've built a bit of a momentum, um, now that, like, Joel's gone um, and they're kind of building themselves back up again, they've got some really good um, new players in as well. I think they're going to go far this season. So hopefully they do, fingers crossed, even though I am now kind of got a soft spot for Carlton. <laughs> That, that'll be interesting then when Carlton Geelong comes around, whenever that is. And then, yes. see, where allegiance lies, but I suppose it might be more towards Geelong because it's more of a longer um, team you've gone for, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of, um, I'm full blood Geelong. My mum was born in Geelong. My dad was from Geelong. So we've, we're, we're a big Geelong household. But um, yeah, I think my dad might have a little bit of a soft spot for Carlton now. Don't tell anyone that. But um. Okay. Yeah, he, he kind of likes Colin a bit, but he wouldn't admit to it that. <laughs> Fair enough. There we go. All right. So, nicknames even at the club. Do you get any nicknames that you get that you either like or dislike? It was something that's always something that can be up to debate sometimes with some people. Yeah. Well, I've recently got the nickname Teeny. Um, that's in reference to my teeny feet because um, I do have quite small feet. So I, I can fit into some kids' boots but um, don't prefer them. So I get the smallest size women's boots there are. So I'm around like a size or five women's. So very small. So that's where the nickname has stemmed from. Not not a massive fan of it but, um, no, nah, it's funny to when the girls go around calling me teeny. Fair enough. I, I won't call you that. I'll, I'll, I'll go away from that. <laughs> so, coaches' pets. Is there any coaches' pets, Evie, at the Blues that you can kind of take an eye on in the time you've been there that you feel is a bit get more a bit of a more of an attention than what they should? Um. Oh yeah, I think I reckon. Oh, Gemma strokes are rough. She likes she likes to seek a lot of feedback, but I wouldn't say she's like a teacher's pet. I would say probably. Octavia Di she 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 likes she likes to seek some feedback. She's very in. She's in the club every single day, so I'd say she's a bit of a teacher's pet. Plus, she's like the captain, so she gets to speak to our coach quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, that, that that it's funny. Always someone in the captain role. It's like they kind of have to, but yeah. then they've also role from them. So it kind of like mixes it together. It's like, yes, you are the coach's pet or teacher's pet, whatever, you know, but because you got the role, but you, then you're also on their end. Well, I have to talk to them. I'm the captain. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Um, I think I, I copped that a little bit last year, like, oh, you're, you're the teacher's pet sometimes. And I'm like, I can't help it. I'm just trying to speak to the coaches. That's what I mean. You've experienced, actually, funnily enough, then you mentioned the captain then, because you've known on the other, other side of the foot, what it yeah. means feels i guess yeah no exactly that's right so any outside of foot interest you have you obviously mentioned the athletics but is there anything outside of those two things then you got outside interests yeah i um i do surf life saving i've done that since i was little i started in nippers um and now, yeah now i've got my like silver medallion um just patrolling at my uh beach where um my grandma's beach house is, so we go down there every um, summer. Yeah. Very good. Would you consider yourself, Evie, a pro surfer? <laughs> no, I'm far from that. <laughs> haven't surfed in like five years, but um, no, I love I love body surfing. That's really good fun and even getting out on like the club boards, it's always fun time. That's fair. Um, I asked that. And, and, oh, yeah. Sorry. Go. No, you go oh, on. I was going to say, and driving the – the inflatable rubber duckies because I've recently got my license to do that. So that is really fun going in and out of that. 
Nice. That's that's interesting. Now, in terms of the surfing, I, the reason I asked you about that, um, not just because you brought it up, but I remember all the way back when they tried doing it at high school a long time ago for me, and you know, I they tried to make you go in the water, right, with the surfboard and try and stand on it. The only time you'll see me be able to successfully stand on the surfboard, Evie, is when the board is on the sand. Yeah, it is quite hard. It is. Get on yeah. it and then I'll fall in seconds pretty much. Oh, yeah. That's why I also snowboard as well. So that's why I like snowboarding because at least I'm strapped in and I'm on a mountain so I know I can actually control how I go down this mountain. Exactly right. Favourite TV shows or movies that you have? Oh, oh, I'm look. I'm not really one for watching a lot of TV. No. I feel like I have to look at my Netflix just to see what I've watched. Um, that's, oh, I like I like a good friends. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I was I was just going to say what genre? So comedy. That'd be a good a good genre to watch. Everyone loves a bit of comedy in their life. Oh, or you yeah. would. You would think so anyway. Um, now, you talked before about being not really a goal celebrator, Evie, but you can be as unrealistic as you like here. If you were to kick the best goal you would love to ever kick, you can be as unrealistic as you want. You can add the moment, the occasion, the angle. What would you love it to be? Oh, well, I'd have to say after the siren, that would probably be the best. Mm -hmm. I reckon... I reckon a snap from the boundary after the siren, and I reckon that's when my celebration would come out. That's when, it, that's when it would come to light. And I think I'd, yeah, I don't even know what I'd do. I think I'd just run around in over happiness. That you can't get much better than that. Now, if your teammates were to describe you, Evie, either former teammates or current teammates, in a word or a sentence, what would that be? Oh. I'd say, well, I'd hope they'd say funny. <laughs> um, funny, I think, hardworking and caring. There we go. Three good ones there. We love it. Uh, Favourite music? Well, I like a bit of house music lately. Um, okay. That Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that. All right. Game day superstitions? Oh. Uh, just a, a banana an hour before the match. I just like that. That's my – I don't know why. I just – that's my routine. I like it. That's good. Jumper number. Is there any meaning behind the current jumper number that you have at the Blues? And Or is it just something that was just given to you? Did you have to pick it? How was that process? Um. Yeah, so currently I got 28. That was the first jumper number I got at nights, actually. So it just happened to cross over and be the same. But I actually – didn't have a game game uh, game day kit when I played my first game, so it was the last jumper left in the box, and it was an extra large. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is such a bad jumper." But the next year, I kept the same number, so it's kind of just followed me. Number twenty eight. Um, so yeah, but I'm nor I'm normally in like a a thirty three girl. That's kind of my normal number, but currently got twenty eight. So. Now, I'm glad you said a number that's not between 1 and 10, Evie, because I don't understand the fascination between the jumper numbers 1 to 10. The only two examples I could think of, or reasons, is because people love to see their AFL, AFLW heroes. Generally, the better players wear those numbers, or so it looks like it is at, at any level. Why do you feel that is? Because obviously you just mentioned there numbers that are much higher, and I've got nothing wrong with those either, personally. I just don't get the fascination between the shorter jumper numbers. No, and... I always, I always had a friend. She always wanted to be number one, and I was like, "Why does it matter?" I think, I think those single digit numbers, yeah, really kind of um, sound important. But I think it's, it, it doesn't really matter. I like a good double, double number, so a two two or a three three. I kind of like the evenness of that. Um, but yeah, that's a good choice. I mean, some other people reckon there could be something's. Because it, it stands out more. I, I don't know. But that anyway, that's some of the examples some people have said. Uh, okay. What's something, Evie, someone does at the club that you can't stand, whether it's leaving rubbish around, it's been flat out annoying, jump scaring people? Is there anything like that that comes to mind? Oh, not really. Like I said, like we're a bit of a well behaved bunch. I think, um, yeah, probably, probably just bit. You see some like tape left lying around sometimes but 
usually that is from myself personally <laughs> I, I tend to I tend to take the tape off and I'm like oh where's the bin and then go find it and put it in the bin later but um yeah no bit of a bit of a well-behaved group I'd say oh that's good very good um some teammates even they've been impressed by the car that are kind of flying under the radar or you feel that it just they don't publicly get talked about as much as you feel that they should yeah um I think uh, uh, Asha, she's just come down from Sydney. Uh, she was at the Sydney Swans Academy um, and she's just really excelled uh, this year. She played on the weekend. She played really great um, in that uh, wing position. Um, yeah, I think she's got some really great ability and she's, I think, 19. So she's got a great future ahead for her. Um, and then I also think uh, we got Steph as well. She's from... Uh, she was from Bendigo Pioneers and she didn't get picked up last year and she's 18 as well. And, yeah, just her composure and run off half back has been, like, outstanding. Like, I've been so impressed by her. So both those girls, I think, have um, some great footy in them. That's good. Now, what are some fun facts, Evie, about you that people may not know about you? Oh, well, I'd say um, a lot of people don't know I'm actually, like – severely dyslexic so learning learning impacts me um but that hasn't really stopped me I managed to get through VC in year 12 um yeah my parents have put a lot of uh work in with helping me get through all of that but um yeah I'd say that's been a bit of a challenge in my life but um yeah not many people know I don't really talk about it that often but um yeah sometimes it can affect me and I've got to work through that but yeah that's fair. Now, hmm, have you ever had any AFL, AFLW player interactions as a fan, Evie, that you remember from something recent, something a long, long time ago? Is there anything that comes to mind that were either memorable or forgettable? Oh, oh, no. I just keep seeing some of the AFL boys around the club and I keep, like, having to freeze and be like, whoop, like a fangirl moment. Um, I think I saw, like, Charlie Kerno and um, Sam Walsh and stuff a couple of times and I've just, like – been eagerly like just staring but no haven't had the guts to go up and speak to them yet but i know that feeling all too well i mean doing a channel has probably helped me to be honest a bit more but like even you know just going to a game and you know you ask for a photo after game or just chat to someone it's like in your mind you're like yep i'm going to ask them for a photo they're about to walk over here i'm gonna ask them and then the moment they get right next to you it's like oh i don't know i might not you know it's just that, that thought process in your head yeah Definitely can be like that. Short now, hmm, defenders. I feel like they deserve a bit more love, even than what they get from a public point of view. In particular, at AFL, AFL W level, um, obviously the Coleman's centre towards forwards and the Brownlows for mids and a little bit of rucks get recognised a little bit there. So, do defenders deserve their own official title at that level as well? Oh. Um, I'm actually not too sure. Wait, can you say that again? Sorry. That's right. So obviously defenders, I mean, they don't really get publicly recognised at an AFL, yeah. AFL view level compared to the other positions. And the Brownlow and the Coleman are obviously centred towards mids forwards. So, and Ruck slowly get votes as well in the Brownlow. So do defenders need their own official title as well, considering the other positions basically have one? Not officially, but we know that's what it's for. Mm. Yeah, I reckon I reckon there should be one prop like... Um, they like some of them work so hard and they're like attack forward. I think like, you know, like Nick Dacos, like you like when when I first found out he was a defender, I was like, What? He's a defender and he runs off half back. Like yeah. are you kidding me? Like so yeah, I think there's a lot of people that deserve some more credit um when it comes to their positioning. Absolutely, they, they definitely do. Now, this is the part of the interview, Evie, where teammates' hearts get broken and teammates may love you more and more. The first one is the best chatterbox of the club. Best chatterbox. Yeah. Well, I'd say Octavia. She loves a good chat. That's, there we go. Another feature. Um, all right. If you were stuck on a deserted island, deserted island with Team ACV, who are you bringing and not bringing and any particular reason why you wouldn't or would bring someone? Okay. Um, I would say... I wouldn't bring – oh, actually, I, I'm very – I can't do this. This is very mean. Um, no, I'd probably bring um, 
uh, Izzy Parnell. She's great. She's a great character. She's funny to be around. She um she'll definitely she'll definitely um come up with some sort of um idea to get someone's attention. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, who else? I reckon. Um, yeah, I'd say maybe like Steph. She's quite. She's quite reserved, but I think she's pretty smart, so she'd come up with some ways to like get us off the island. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. All right, I'll make it a bit more, Evie. Um, what are some traits that people that people would do that you wouldn't want to bring? Then is there any particular type of person that would do something that you like? Like if you do this, you're not coming. Type thing. Then. Okay. Well, I reckon Izzy Curry. She she loves a good fight. Um. So probably not her, but just because, um, she might get a bit heated with everyone else, and then we might start having fights, and then you know that that's not a good thing on a desert island. You want to be civil with everyone. Um, I reckon I bring Gemma Stokes because she's so nice and pleasant with everyone that I think she'd be a good mediator as well. Yeah, you definitely need people like that for sure. Uh, loudest and quietest teammates, Evie? Oh, um, loudest I'd say is Izzy Curry. Um, mm -hmm. She's pretty vocal on the field. Uh, quietest, I, I'd probably say Steph. She's pretty quiet. I mean, you, in, you mentioned there Izzy a few times, and in, particularly in being the loudest part. Um, but, you know, you need people like that, you know, on the footy field. You can't be a mute. You need to talk. And you would know who being a captain when you were. Yeah, no, definitely. And she's our vice captain this year, and her leadership has really, like, um, stepped up as well this season. So, um, yeah, like, she's a great asset to have in that leadership team. For sure. Um, now, this is the other part of the interview where, the hot topic food questions, Evie, come out because I don't know what it is with people here in Australia with the uh, hot topic food questions, Evie. They just get so worked up over this. Now, chicken palmy, is it a palmy or is it something else? No, it's got to be a palma. I'm a, oh, I'm a girl all the way. Who no. Now, I've asked well over 50 people this question, Evie, and only two people have said something opposite to palmy, which is what you said. Um, okay. I, it just happened to be because you said it and I disagree. So why do you feel it's a palmer? <laughs> mm, um, well, I don't know. I think I've just always been brought up with it's palmer. Um, but I think like pa like chicken parmajama, it, like it doesn't, like that's like the full name of it. Like it doesn't make sense for it to be a palmy. It's chicken parmajama. So there's a palma part of All right. It. All right. I'll just do one rebuttal. <laughs> Spell out palmy chana and then see where you go. Well, <laughs> mate, that's because I'm dyslexic. Can't really can't really spell that out. But, yeah, it's, yeah, it is what it is. That's fair enough. No, only tongue-in-cheek. The, the, you should have seen the first person. That said, my actual reaction was worse for the first person that said it. They are... Uh, yeah, no good, but that's okay. All good. It's all we're all good with that person and the other person that said it. We're all good, and you. Now, this, now I've never had anyone disagree with more than three, three or more of these six questions. So please don't be the first of that. Right, the second one: tomato sauce, cupboard or fridge? Fridge. No, no, meat, pie is, meat pie is nice and cool. I think from the hotness of the meat pie. Very true, and good logical reason. So we'll make that one for two. All right, pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? Yes, I do like a good pineapple pizza. No, no, no. All right, one out of three. Okay, don't. Oh, here we go. All right, foods you like, favourite food? Favourite food? i got to say sushi. I went to Japan, like, in January, and it was so good. Hmm. Interesting. I can't agree with that either, but that's okay. Not everyone, not everyone has to agree with everything. Now, food you don't like? Oh, uh, this is going to be really controversial, but I do not like spaghetti bolognese. Like, like oh, no. I, hate, I hate it. I can't. I don't like the minced meat with the tomato sauce. Like, I can eat, like, burrito-style, like, minced meat, but not spaghetti. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, but you saved yourself there by saying you like burrito minced meat, so I'll give it a tick. Not that I agree with the bolognese part, but I like the burrito part even. 
We'll make that two out of five. Good. Right, the last one for this one. Favourite takeaway plays? Oh, I love grilled. I love their burgers, so I'd say, like, grilled. Good one. Three out of six, not bad. Or four out of six, it might have been. Not bad. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. We'll move on from that. Okay. What are some quirks, Evie, that you would have that some people would say... Uh, what are some quirks that some people would say you, that you have that you wouldn't necessarily like admitting or something that they say that you know is full of, you know, want? Um, oh, I'm not too sure. I'm, ca- I'm kind of, good. I don't know. That's a good yeah. thing. That's a, and no one says anything there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I can't think of anything. No, well, that's good. Now, Celebrity Crush. Oh, look, I'm going to be probably a bit basic and say a bit of Jacob Elordi. I don't mind him. Mm. I think when I was younger, I had a bit of a crush on Robert Patterson from Twilight. But um, I'd I'd say current celebrity crush, Jacob Elordi. So I've heard Jacob's name so many times. um, So the only one that brings him up. um, So that's all good. All right. So most prized possessions that you own, Evie, what would you say they are? Oh, um, my new runners because um, my feet need my really supportive runners. So I'd say that's pretty prized possession. My phone, I'm addicted to my phone. So I would say that as well as the TikTok app because that is very addictive. Um, and I'd say my emotional support water bottle as well. Very it's, nice. It's gone through it. Um, it's really been banged up, but she's still living. That's good. She's been put through the ringer, Evie. Yeah, she has. Um, you know, I love that you mentioned the phone too, Evie, because I feel like anyone your age, which is not much different to mine, you know, I think people are really full of crap when they say a phone. They might not be, the, you know, their highest priority for some, but to say it's not a priority that's for the people that do say that, I think they're lying straight through. Oh, I can't, I can't get up in the morning without checking my phone. Like, it's so addictive, which is so bad as well. So I think something needs to be done to, like, limit my screen time and everyone else's screen time as well. Fair enough. But, you know, like you said, you know, you need you need it to communicate to people. You can't communicate. What, are you going to throw a paper aeroplane and just hope it lands somewhere? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, what else am I going to do? I'm going to phone up a friend. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I'll just message someone. Oh, shit, I can't do that. Uh, I'll ring them. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm gonna play this game. Oh wait, uh, you know what I mean? It's just like you need it. Yeah, I don't I don't know how my parents coped with just the one home phone that everyone had to share. I definitely could not live in that day and age. Or yeah, well, even longer than that, where for people that didn't have them at all. Unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. Now I've got a few more for you, Evie, so I do appreciate you coming on. Um, if you were the AFLW CEO or VFLW CEO for a day, what rule would you add and or remove? Oh, I reckon the holding on the mark rule, that, like, no, you're not allowed to move your feet. I reckon that kind of annoys me sometimes because I'm just like, I just want to get to them. Um, yeah. So I'd say that probably. Uh, the stand rule, yeah, that's definitely yeah. yeah, that's definitely a common answer too, and I can see why, and maybe this is just showing the AFL that this is what they should be removing. AFLW, that, that's what they should be removing. Yeah, exactly. Plain and simple. Now, the last one, I appreciate you coming on. So, Eve, if you could map out this entire dream scenario for you this year, how would you love this year from right now to the end of the year or end of the draft year, how would you love this season to pan out for you? Um, yeah, I think just playing, getting some games, um, games under my belt, um, playing a bit would be great. And, yeah, getting some AFLW experience in a train-on position, um, that would be amazing. Mm, very good. Sounds good, Evie. Um, I'll just add on to that. I mean, what do you do when you're not selected for the VFLW side? Do you get to play somewhere else? Do you have to just sit it out? How does that work? Yeah, um, we normally go back to our local clubs where we're registered to play local um, and play there. We can also train with them if we want. Um, but, yeah, it just depends on what the coaches want to see and do and that sort of thing. That's fair enough. Evie, Evie's been a pleasure having you on. All the best for the rest of the season. Hopefully those games start very soon. And then that dream at the end of the year, that A4W club. So really do appreciate you coming on.
Awesome. Thank you, Cooper. Alright, thank you.